Hi everybody, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Barodi. I'm Mrs. Barodi, and I'm back in my classroom. Isn't that fantastic? Um, today we're gonna be talking about one point perspective, okay? My current students, this is something that we're gonna practice this week, and then next week we are going to do um, a project based on this skill. So it's gonna be very important that we practice, and I don't care how many times you mess up, as long as you're doing your best, I'm a happy camper, okay? So one point perspective means everything goes back to one point. And when I show you the example, we'll talk more about some vocabulary words that go along with that, okay? It's kind of tricky, you will get frustrated, but if you practice, you're gonna be awesome at it, and then our project next week is gonna be amazing. All right, let's get started. All right, gang, for our one point perspective, we're gonna need a piece of paper. I like using just a nice white piece of paper, but if all you have is notebook paper, that actually might come in handy with the lines, or even graph paper, that would be great too. But if you have a choice, I would stick with the plain white paper. Or if all you have is colored paper, as long as it's light, yellow would be fine, pink, things like that. You're gonna need a pencil, a ruler, or a straight edge. If you have zero rulers in your house, then you can find something with a straight edge. I might use a folder, I might use one of my sketchbooks, whatever you have, heck, post-it note, nice and straight, right? You do need to be kind of long-ish because we are gonna draw a few longer lines, but as long as it's nice and straight, we're good to go. And then maybe a black pen or a black Sharpie to outline things so I can see them a little better. Sometimes when you guys do pencil, it's hard for me to see if you take a picture of it or if you're showing it to me on Zoom, okay? So number one, a few vocabulary words. One point perspective means everything goes back to one point, okay? There's two point perspective, three point perspective. That means we're, we're worrying about a whole bunch of other different points. But for us, one point perspective, everything goes back to one point. And we call that the vanishing point, okay? And our vanishing point is gonna be on our horizon line. Now horizon might be a familiar word to some of you because when you think about landscapes or if you're outside on a hike, the horizon is where the sky meets the land. So if we were doing a landscape and we wanted a horizon line right in the middle, all of this would be sky, all of this would be ground. We're not worried about that. We just need a horizon line to put our vanishing point on. For this, because this is practice for a project for next week, we're not worried about it being perfect and we're not too worried about where our line is. I'm gonna stick it right in the middle because then I can do shapes on either side of my line. And you can see I went back and forth just to make sure I had a nice line that you could see. And if you wanted to be a little bit lighter, you could only go one time nice and light. And I held my ruler right in the middle, nice and hard so it didn't go anywhere. So hard it shook my table a little bit, right? So this part you can do freehand or you can use your ruler or straight edge to do. If you know that you're not great at making straight lines, maybe use the ruler for this part. You're gonna draw three shapes underneath the horizon line and three shapes above the horizon line. I would avoid things that are round, like circles, ovals, hearts. I would stick to things that have corners and no round edges. So squares, rectangles, you could do a star if you were feeling particularly challenging today. Um, anything that's got corners, a triangle, a rhombus, hexagon, whatever. If you can freehand a hexagon, I wanna see that. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna make a square. So I'm looking at my ruler and I went from the 13th centimeter to 17. So that's one, two, three, four centimeters. So I'm gonna turn my ruler. It doesn't matter where I line it up. Obviously if I do that, that's not gonna be a good square. We want a nice right angle. So for my square, I'm gonna line it up again and count one, two, three, four. And that's where my line is gonna be. Then I'm gonna move it up here and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, whoop. And then I just gotta match up these lines and we should be pretty square. Is it perfect? Nope, and that's okay. So we're gonna pretend that I used my ruler and drew three more squares. But again, if you wanna just freehand it, if you think you can do a pretty good job, go for it. And this, I can see the line a little bit better. So if you decide to just go freehand, maybe go back over it again so it's nice and dark and we can see it, okay? So I have my three shapes, and then I would do three more up here. Again, something with corners, triangles, rectangles, things like that. Now I'm gonna pick my vanishing point. I can put it anywhere along here, but I'm gonna put it in the middle-ish 
just to see what happens. Okay, so now I got my squares, I have my horizon line, I got my vanishing point. I wanna take my shapes and draw lines all the way back there so it looks like my squares are vanishing into the background. So to do that, I'm gonna draw a straight line from a corner to the vanishing point. Corner to the vanishing point. Corner to the vanishing point. I'm not gonna do this corner because if this was nice and solid and colored in, we wouldn't see that line, right? So here's my trick. I'm gonna put my pencil on my vanishing point. I'm gonna put a ruler up against it. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's nice and solid. Now I'm not worried about that. Now I can worry about down here and lining it up with my corner. So I've lined it up with the corner. It's on the vanishing point. I'm holding it nice and steady. Whoop. Now I got a line. Now we're gonna go to the next corner. Okay, now the next corner. So when I'm done, my square is vanishing back in space. Now the way people that um, do drawings and paintings with one point perspective, they would make these lines a lot lighter so they could erase them because they might turn this into, let's say, a building of some kind. So they'd end up getting rid of these. Let's see if I can erase it without wiggling my, oh, so wiggly, sorry guys. Earthquake, we're good? Okay, so now erasing those lines, this could be turned into a house. Pretty simply, right? So you're gonna, I don't worry, I'm not worried about erasing lines or turning it into anything. What I wanna see is a nice vanishing point on the horizon line. I wanna see three shapes above and three shapes below that horizon line. Now this is where things get tricky. Can I draw a line from this corner to the vanishing point? Let's see if I do that. It lines up practically perfect on that other line. That's okay. This is where we're kind of figuring things out. This is like that other one on the other side, just going in the opposite. I'm not gonna do this bottom corner because I don't wanna see it. I'm not, I don't have a see-through shape. All right, my friends, please remember that this is practice. So if you wanna do it more than once, and if you wanna make it a little bit more challenging and do a round shape or something with lots of points like a hexagon or a star, you could go for it. But what I really wanna see is three shapes and three shapes, triangle, rectangle, square, rhombus, diamond, all right? If you wanna try some things out, because we're gonna take this skill for next week and use it and then make it a little bit more challenging for ourselves. So if you wanna practice a little bit with the more challenging stuff, go for it. But if you don't, three shapes, three shapes. I want a horizon line. Can I spell it right? Horizon. I don't know if I did. So this is the horizon line and that's the vanishing point. So sorry for the wiggles, guys. Okay, in your project, horizon line, vanishing point, three shapes on the bottom, three shapes on the top, all right? If you are one of my current students, you can submit it by um, showing me live on one of our Tuesday and Thursdays office hours. You can upload a picture to our stream. You can attach a picture when you turn it in. Any of those things work. If you're not one of my students, show somebody else. I'm sure somebody's gonna be proud of you for doing this. Um, my students, there's also an additional assignment, so go back into our Google Classroom and check it out. Don't forget, okay? Have fun, make sure that you're being safe, you're being kind, and you're being creative with straight lines. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.